This is JPEG Raw Photo Review Show number 45, and we're coming back with the final review of December images. Some of these images we've not seen before. Some of them, uh, at least one of them we have, and there's a redo. And I'll show you the redo. AD, I don't think I have it in the thing where you can see it. It's not a dramatic difference as far as like she didn't do a lot of um, heavy editing, but she did mm -hmm. do a, a change based on feedback. And I think you'll see a, a, a big difference there with that. Cool. So I'll show before and after what, what she did. So we're going to uh, wrap up December and then we'll quickly, in the next show, head to January. Um, if you want to enter, so now we're here in March, halfway through March. If you want to enter, you can go to jbdraw.com slash contest. And there you have the link where you can enter through our website or through the Facebook groups. Uh, for now, the Facebook groups, we're still, we're still going to do that. You know, Facebook has under a lot of pressure right now and lots of departures from Facebook. And so who knows what the future holds, but for, for now is where, you know, a lot of our community is still based and I don't have a good alternative because I think a lot of people like to stay on Facebook and do that, but that's for another day. We'll, we'll continue going there. You can enter through the website. I know several people, that's what they do now every month. They enter through the website. Um, so it's, must be working for them. Uh, head on over there. The theme for March is, again, is, is open. We're going to continue that for a while. Um, so whatever you want to do. Uh, all right. So that's, that's the intro and how you can enter. Let's get right into some of the images. Let me get that cool. ready. All right. Our first one up is this image from Millen, our friend Millen. And Millen says... Uh, let's see. I'm not going to pronounce that right, but it's <laughs> Sm smart off peak, uh, or whatever. S Smeed. I'm not going to try even try it. As locals call this mountain is located near the town of, I'm not going to pronounce that town either. <laughs> Sorry, Millen. I, you know, my English is bad. Everything else is non-existent for me. I can't speak that well with that stuff. Anyway, he says, this is a magical place to, to spend some time. The nature, the nature there is amazing. Uh, I was at my village for the day, uh, for the day, and near sunset, I've had some minutes to take a small walk. Um, this, this was the sky I saw for about five to six minutes, then it was gone. I took as many shots and angles as possible. Awesome. Um, cool. but this, but this one happened to be my favorite. It was built from 16 vertical shots in process with Lightroom and Photoshop. Wow. Yeah. And I know, uh, A.D., one of the things that we often talk about or you often talk about here is the balance between the, you know, the, the sky and then mm -hmm. the, the ground or whatever else there. Yep. And finding that and not having a horizon just right there smack dab in yep. the middle, which he didn't do here. He did balance it with with the sky much more prominent and he gave, overweighted the sky because I think right. for him it was the clouds and the and the, the light shining through those clouds. Yeah. And um, so my thing is there, there's a lot of um, there's a lot of negatives surrounding the clouds, which are really close to the middle. So being that this is it's a little bit in a cinema, like a cinematic kind of format, but it's not quite there either yet. So for me, it's um, the composition is a, a tad bit confusing. Um, okay. There are some leading lines in it that, that look good. Uh, I like what he did with, and there's going to be another photo that we're going to talk about horizons and um, balance. Um, I think for me, when I look at this image, and Mike, I could be wrong, but uh, for me, the what really speaks out are the the God rays in the mm -hmm. cloud, yep. the dramatic cloud, which is very dramatic. Um, and then there's a whole spot on the left hand side of the image which there is nothing, and I mean it's just. There's nothing there. Uh, and on the right, we kind of have like this kind of cloud coming in with a kind of nothing as well. Um, so it's a little targeted towards the center uh, for me. And we've talked about this a lot. Now, is there something that we could just crop it and change it? I don't think there is. I think this is one of those times where um, you're going to want to sit around and take a lot of photos from different angles and Watch this cloud burst as it moves across the horizon and see which one balances out the best. I actually would would have, and I know Millen, you know, I know you shot these in vertical shots. Maybe that was kind of like a your sub 
your subliminal uh, thought process speaking in the background because I probably would have turned this into a portrait uh, crop instead of a landscape uh, because it's it's really about that that cloud in that part of it. And I think if he pulls in both sides and makes that cloud kind of right up through the center um, and then has his horizon where it is and everything and that nice mountain pointing up like that, I think you would see that the image would be a lot more powerful in that uh, configuration. But that is just a suggestion to try. For me, if I was to take this shot, the only thing that would bug me is that it's a little lopsided balance wise there isn't like a push pull there's mm -hmm. like a there's like a pull push pull going on here the two skies are kind of pulling in both directions and um if i do that i want to make sure that they're equal on both sides there's symmetry there which we don't you know we rarely get that with clouds um so i i don't usually uh if i'm featuring a cloud burst like this i probably wouldn't think symmetry in my head now that doesn't mean it's not possible or something to try while you're out there because who knows, you could be the groundbreaking photographer that comes up with symmetrical clouds somehow and and <laughs> breaks through the fourth wall. I don't know. I'm not trying to quell anybody's um, you know creativity there. But I know uh, Millen always watches the rebroadcast mm -hmm. of these. And it's a beautiful photo and his processing is great on it. I love the, the bright colors and everything. That really, to me, he's been listening about the warmth of the sun and uh, making it a little warmer, which makes you think of like this was a warm afternoon. I'm totally getting that from the image. And I think the end the end result there is that he he pulled off an image that makes me say, oh, I'd like to be standing at that field right now and taking photos. So I, ultimately, no matter about the composition or any of that other stuff that we talk about, if he got his message across with the photo, that to me uh, is is a win situation. So I think as far as that goes, he, uh, he did that with the photo. And we've talked about how Millen has come a, a long way yeah. since when he started and his message in his photos is starting to really – um, is starting to speak more without the the subtext. And I know you, uh, if I was to ask Millen for one thing, I'd be, Millen, could you phonetically spell everything that you um, you put in your, your notes? Because we can never uh, figure out how to say the words that, that he gives us in these wonderful towns and places where he visits. Um, Smeedoff, Smeedoff Peak? I, um, if I try, I'm going to murder it. So I don't want to do <laughs> Let that. Let me know um, if I said that right, uh, Millen. Right. Um, so, uh, I think that, uh, what I see from Millen is just that he's starting to express himself through his photos without explanation. Uh, so, I think that's what I'm getting to. So I have a question for you. You, you mentioned sure. leading lines. So mm -hmm. there's the, the line of, uh, that's not probably a road, it's just a field, but there's a definite edge to the, to the field that's been maybe plowed to the part yeah. that's not. So there's a line there. And then really the mountain range has a line going from, from right, our right to up to the peak, do yeah. either one of those two lines help at all? Well, I, I don't think that they help. That's the problem I'm running okay. into. I think there's more of a, a hindrance there because there's actually a line coming in from the far left too along mm -hmm. that tree line. Um, but none of them – like leading lines are great as long as they go to the point of interest. That's what we're always looking for. That's what a leading line's definition is, is that lines that draw our eye to what your prize is. And so – we have these lines all pointing, but they're kind of their end point. As we follow a leading line, say the, the edge of that field like you are looking, mm -hmm. it actually, if you followed it up and kept going, which is what your eye is supposed to do, it follows a line and keeps going, it actually points below the big cloud on the, more to the right. Yeah. So maybe, uh, you know, here's a suggestion. If he changed his, shifted his position a little bit, and saw that line, he might have been able to line it up to point at that cloud a little bit more, uh, depending on his perspective there. So that's a good point to make there. Um, right now, it's kind of, you know, we got lines that are kind of crisscrossing. We have the the field line, and then we have the the top, the mountain line, and they're kind of just going the end points. So one's over here and one's over here for me. Okay. Um, so the trick there would have been to try to change your uh, your angle, maybe down lower or a little bit more over to one side, or maybe uh, it actually probably would have moved more to my right, would have allowed it to open up those two lines so that they pointed right at that cloud. Okay. That would be my suggestion. So Very good. All right. Yep. Thank you, Millen. 
as awesome. always. Keep it up, Millen. Yeah, keep it up. All right, next image up is this one from Christina Binge. And this is a re-edit of one she did before. Right? Gotcha. Yeah. Yes, that's what she says. She says, uh, image redo from February submission. I love going back and rewatching these. And she's talking about rewatching these is this show right here. Uh, then re-editing or reshooting images to enhance the original image from based off the critique. I now want to shoot some images with black with backlighting after rewatching this fit, this review from February. I wrote backlighting down on my to-do list for my 52 week project. And I, this is the one where I have the original that Before she did. Before and after. Yeah. So this, this is the one she re-edited and, and, uh, Submitted for this uh, the December contest. This was mm-hmm. the original. Okay. So what she's done here, if, the big thing is the crop, and then yep. the removal of the um, Kool Aid. So Kool Aid. This is the original. This is the the redo. Yeah, filling the frame more. I think the subject is right in the third lines. Um, I really think that uh, you know we had talked before about the lighting and everything. Mm-hmm. Um, she she pretty much nailed that. That was all spectacular. It was very dramatic. Um, we loved the pose about it. I mean, we talked about all of that. So the only thing really was the distractions. And I think you can clearly see between those two now yeah. that Before. she simplified the image quite a bit. Yeah. Plus, we don't have a – we're not doing a an ad for Kool-Aid, yeah. right? Yeah. I mean, we know it's – we kind of get that it's Kool-Aid or we it, that it's some sort of refreshing summer drink. We don't even want to say the brand name here. Um, and that was one of the things that would, when I saw it distracted me from the rest of the image. So I think this, um, this edit was done quite nicely and, and she just a very simple edit too. Mm-hmm. Um, I was confused by the talk though, uh, Christina says, and I know she's probably out there cause she's usually hanging out with us, um, about backlighting because this isn't backlit, uh, unless she shot some sort of light on a screen in the back. I think but our, t- our critique or your critique might have been okay. to have some backlighting, and that's what she's she you know was wanting to do when she redoes this. Gotcha. So she's going to redo. She's going to reshoot the image. Yeah. This was just a re edit. Okay. All right. Yeah. I didn't follow along with the text along. Uh, so, um, uh, so yeah, that if the backlight usually when we talk about that, just not to be confusing, would be to shoot a light uh, from behind, usually using a snoot or something that, that focuses mm-hmm. more of a a beam of light. Uh, on the back of her head, which would actually highlight around her hair and everything and just kind of frame that uh, her face even more. It's a pretty dramatic thing. But I kind of like, you know, now that she's done the edit that she's done, I think the dramatic light just from one side, just having a point light from one side is just um, it, it just the photos. Perfect. I don't yeah. uh, you know, it, the other stuff would be experimental. I mean, you can always see what that does. A lot of times backlighting is really good with dramatic photos. Like if you're trying to get them waving their hair all over the place or, you know, you have a, you're going for more of a silhouetted look. Um, yeah. So, yeah I, I love this re-edit. Um, I, oh, yeah, I like the original, but man, it's, there was two, I think with the original, there's uh, part of the issue was the top. There was just too much space up there that was wasted. Yeah. yeah. I mean, if it was going to be a magazine cover, yeah. By all means, you know, if it was a, if it was a, the Kool Aid magazine, if they had a magazine, mm-hmm. uh, the very first photo would have been absolutely perfect. It's got the logo in there, and it's got space for a title up at the top. But if we're looking at more of like a portrait for the wall, I think this one says everything it needs to say without having the product in there. Yeah, um, and it's up. You're more. It's more personal. You can get the emotion. I think a little bit more. And and I wanted to say too, knowing Christine, if she. If she does experiment with the back lighting, we're in for a treat. I'm sure it's going to be amazing <laughs> stuff because she always submits great photos. So. Yep. All right. Up next is this image from, I think, an, a new submitter, Scott Bridgers. Yes. And, yes. And Scott, he named it Bodie Island Stars and Storm. Yeah. Uh, mm-hmm. He says, a friend and I tried to plan at least one trip a year to shoot the Milky Way. This image was taken at the Bodie Island Lighthouse in the Outer Banks of North Carolina. The plan was actually to shoot the Cape Hatteras Lighthouse, but due to cloud cover, we decided to head back to Bodie Island, which is was on our way home. But halfway there, the sky started to open up, and we were actually able to get a few good shots of the Milky Way. While shooting the Milky Way, Milky Way a storm appeared in the background, and we were able to capture a few lightning strikes off in the distance behind the lighthouse. 
This image is multiple shots blended together from the same night in the same spot. This is the first picture I have posted on Facebook where I got requests for prints from friends and coworkers, which yep. goes to your thing about, you know, you take a good image. If you super crop it, not, not that he did that here. But if you, right. if you super crop it, you're going to have troubles later on uh, with, with the print. Yeah. A few things, a few questions I would have for him. Um, and welcome, Scott, welcome to the, uh, to the critique family uh, that we have going on here. Um, and thank you for submitting your image. And also thank you for being honest because I see a lot of images like this and the photographers are not honest. Um, they would be like, Oh, I was out there and I took a picture and, and then this lightning happened right in the middle of it. And we, I caught this amazing moment and you're in, and anybody who's gone out and tried to do this and knows the technical side of the camera knows that that is not possible. It is not possible to gather enough light to get the Milky Way at anything more than F4 and a decent ISO because essentially if you if you're if you go up to like anything even F4 is too much. Um, I usually shoot it at F2.8 or F1.4 if I can, um, depending on the lens and that's going to get you the stars without a lot of movement in them and with and keeping your ISO to a point where you don't have a lot of noise. And the reason why um, you want that is because someone's going to request a print. And when you go to print it, you're going to be really disappointed when all of that noise shows up in your print. Mm -hmm. um, or you have to denoise it so much that when you print it, it looks like a smudgy mess. So you've got to be really careful um, so if anybody tells you that they took it all in one shot, they're just out and out lying unless someone's invented a camera that no one has yet um, or that not even like, you know, a good company like Sony knows how to make. No, <laughs> it, it must be an iPhone. Uh, right. Yeah. It must be. an iPhone. They're, they're magical. Anyway. Right. So you need to composite an image like this, which means that you would shoot it like F 2.8 and focus on the stars, get that shot, not move your camera, keep it right where it's at. Then you're going to focus on the foreground because that, that 2.8 is not going to get the foreground and infinity at the same time. You're going to have to adjust for that and you have to do it in the dark, which is the other hard mm -hmm. part. So you want to bring lights with you so that you can put a point light out there and look at it through your viewfinder and get the focus for the foreground. And then you'll blend those two images together. Um, this was several images and some editing blended together. Um, and he did a great job. I don't have a problem with this. I know he explains in there that um, I, I put multiple things together and you might be thinking, well, geez, you know, the lightning storm and blah, and the Milky Way and geez, what else are you going to put in there? You know, like Superman flying through the phone. Yeah. This was, he gathered all of the cool things that happened to him that night and put them in one image without moving his camera mind you. Um, and I'm okay with that. I'm all right with this kind of edit uh, because it brings that back to, he wants you to experience the what he saw while he was there. He yeah. saw this beautiful uh, Milky Way and he saw the, the lighthouse and that's fine. Where I caution against photos like this is you better make damn well sure that there is no noise and no smudginess in those stars and that all of that background is nice and clear and perfect focus because when you get those asks for prints, you might get some eight by tens, and but someone's going to come along and they're going to be like, you know what? I got a lot of money. I want that on my wall. No, I want it on my wall. I mean, my whole wall. That's what I want. Wow. You know, I want a 96 inch print on metal so I can really see this. And you're going to get people who live in this area who have multi-million dollar homes that want to put this on their wall. And you wouldn't be surprised how your photos reach out and grab these people and they see this and they want it. Um, so don't be surprised. That's going to come along. And it's a great thing to strive for. But you better – when you sell a photo for, say, $1,500, $3,000, you want to make sure that when they put it on their wall, they're not like, oh, why does that look like that? That's and not then what you I saw called, on Facebook, yeah. Right. That's not what I saw on Facebook. And and so the internet is not really good for letting you see photos really, you know, the, the way they are. And so I can't see on this photo. I can't critique on this photo anything other than I love the fact that he brought an image and he was able to composite it together and and bring that back to the viewer. My, my critique would lie in asking Scott, 
about the technical side of it. Are those stars clear? Can I see a one-to-one -one of those stars? Can I see all of your edits? Can I see where you're, you mashed your clouds in with your, you know, with your stars and all that kind of stuff? Because typically we know that capturing lightning usually results in a long exposure. We usually keep over and over and over again. We'll shoot 10 second shots over and over and over again, or five second shots, whatever the exposure calls for. We just leave the shutter, keep going. And when the lightning hits, it'll be in the shot. Um, so I would, you know, I would ask those questions. I'd like to see a one-to-one -one of this image uh, and be able to look at the edits close up before I can give like my official seal on good job, Scott, you, you nailed it. Mm -hmm. You should sell a lot of these photos, but be wary, especially if you guys are starting out, you put an image out like this and you can't follow it up, which means you can't walk the walk. Okay. And you're, you're not, you can't handle that. You might as well go and try something else in photography or try some other sort of hobby because you're, you're going to hurt yourself more than you're going to help yourself. If you have to deal with a lot of people who aren't happy with their prints, um, it's not a good foot for, foot to get off from, you know, your first foot to get off uh, on. So just be careful. Um, I want to see images like this, but um, feel free to send us one-to-one -one images um, so I can really zoom in, take a tight look at this kind of stuff, because I would love to help you if that's what you want to do. Um, so, there are, so let me ask you this then. If you, sure. So let's say, and we're not saying, you know, one way or the other with Scott, we can't really tell from what you put up right, on Facebook. Right, we can't. Um, but it's probably better uh, if, if that, let's say the case is that it's, it has issues, that there's noise in the sky and that kind of stuff, yep. that when you get those print requests, uh, that you would, uh, you know, you wouldn't print for those people who want those really big ones. They're going to pay the money for those really big mm -hmm. ones that you might self-select. I'm only going to print up to a certain size, right? Rather than do harm for yourself. Yeah, you know, if you got a great good image, you know, do whatever. But do you think that's good advice to say, hey, if I got some issues here, I'm going to limit it the size? Yeah, it is and it isn't. I mean, um, <laughs> you know, the phrase "be careful what you wish for." Right. I mean, um, we all get into this. I think is a hobby and then it grows. People see our images. You start thinking, oh, wow, I'd rather do this than, you know, to nine work. to five. Or, <laughs> right. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Um, and I would suggest that Scott get some prints done before I, I know this is so hard to do. It's really hard to go out and take an amazing photo and not be proud and want to show everyone what mm -hmm. you've done. Uh, that is kind of like a driving force for what we do. We want to share what we do. There's certain people who want to do it for just the approval thing. Um, mm -hmm. and that's fine. There's certain people who do it that they, you know, they want the, the reason why I post my photos is because I want to inspire others to want to go to these places and they, I want to give them the feeling that I, when I was there, maybe that will make them want to go there and, and see it and do that sort of stuff. So I think it, it's just one of those things you got to be careful. I probably, before I would release an image like this, I would get it printed myself so that I know, because you're not going to be able to speculate mm -hmm. about how big that's going to print. You're going to actually have to print something that's expensive to get done. You, you know, you've got to pay for to have the prints done, but I think you've got to do that uh, with images like this. Milky Way images especially because you can even zoom in one-to-one -one and then the, when you get them back from print, they don't look the same. Um, uh, when I was starting to do metal prints, the metal print process, which is very misleading because it's not actually a print, it's actually a sublimation dye process. So it's more like actually a developed film mm. than it is an actual print. They just call them metal prints. But when I first – when I got my first print back, I was like, well, that – that is that's horrible. And I wrote and I I got right on the phone. I'm like, hey, um, what the hell's wrong with my my image? Is like really dark, and this doesn't make any sense. And he's like, well, part of the process of the sublimation dye and the, the transfer process, images do come out more contrast uh, oriented, and we do specify that on our website, which I didn't look at. I was just like, I want to get this. this is awesome. I want to do this. So then I had to change my process. Uh, so that when I went to that medium, it ended up looking like what I saw on the screen. Because and 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 I'm I'm not talking about monitor calibration because I had I had done that already. That was my first argument to them was, hey guys, uh, I calibrate my monitors like every other week, and you know so I know that the gamut and everything is right. And they're like, well, this is part of the process. 
and then did show me on the website that they had a thing at right clearly that I didn't read. Yeah. Um, but the, they I tell read. you they tell you what to do so you. Can yeah. Get, so they yeah. they just basically said that you want to process the photo to look a little bit more faded than what you expect it to be. And they gave me a few suggestions to try. We did a couple of test prints. They sent me some small prints. Most print houses will send you demos of your photos on small prints for free because they want you as a customer. Right. Um, and they'll send you a little six by 10. And that's all you need to mm -hmm. really see it on. Um, and so they did that back and forth a couple of times with me. Um, this was when Black River Imaging was Black River Imaging and they weren't owned uh, by other people. Bay Photo is who they're owned by now. Um but they were very, you know, they'd call me up the, the, and they'd say, yeah, we're, we're printing it right now. And, and this is what we're seeing. And we'll send this out to you. And I'd be like, cool, man. And, and so we'd have that one-to-one. -one. And, and so if you can find a print house that'll work with you uh, and get a few of those images done like that before you go to print, it's really important to do that before you start advertising something out to the world and then get the request for them because it's, you know, it's like I always tell people with the website, you and I have talked about mm -hmm. this before, Mike, about, you know, self-hosting for me was a wonderful thing to self-host my website right up until I had a story go viral and they crashed my website on my computer mm -hmm. and my computer wouldn't work anymore because I'm like <laughs> thousands of people are spamming my cable connection at home because I, I was self-hosting my website. So, you know, I went to a big web provider and said, you know, people who could handle it. Um, and so, but I missed all, uh, there was a big missed opportunity mm -hmm. for me because there was a lot of people who never got to see that viral story from the beginning. Right. And, yeah. um, so that's one of those things. It's just like that with this print thing. It's a wonderful photo. I love it, Scott, and I'm glad that you submitted it. Uh, but I can't critique it other than to tell you that, you know, the composition's good. I like that. Um, I like what you did that you brought that idea home, but I, I would be very surprised if it's ready to go to big print, um, just from what I'm seeing. And that's what I'm seeing on the screen. I'd have to see it one-to-one -one, and then I would really be able to, to help you yeah. decide, you know, what you can do there. So, so. The, the, the lesson, if you're like me and you hardly ever print anymore, the lesson there is to, when you get an image like this, that you think it may have a, a, an appeal from people that might want to print it is to go ahead and, and print it yourself and get familiar with, with some of those print processes mm -hmm. so that when somebody comes, you're, you're ready to go and you know what to expect from your image. Yeah. And here's another tip for you. If you're out with friends and you went and shot this with a bunch of other friends and they're doing the same photo and you're thinking to yourself, well, you know, um, I got to get mine out there before m my buddy gets it out there so I can show, you know, my fans, I did it first or whatever. Don't think like that. Um, show a picture of you working on the photo. You don't have to show the, you know, the if you want to show yeah. people, yeah, just say, hey, man, working on this new photo, I'm going to be super excited to show it to you guys when it's done. And that buys you some time in the social media world to work on your photo and get it right. Let your buddy release his anytime he wants to. Let him fumble over and find out that the it, you know process may not work the way that he thinks it. Don't worry about that. You get caught up in that sort of stuff and your art's going to suffer because of it. Just focus on what you're doing. And, and I would hold back a little bit. Um, I see it with a lot of photographers. They go out and take a photo. They come home. They, they want to get it right on the Internet. I think the idea of taking your phone and taking photos and then sharing it with everybody, especially if you're trying to make a name for yourself as a photographer, you're, you're going to miss something so at one point in time. And I tell you what, one thing is all the Internet needs to just forget about you for, forever. Mm -hmm. So you've got to be super careful when it goes uh, with, with this kind of stuff. But it's a beautiful image. Um, and I hope Scott submits some more to us. And Scott, like I said, well, you know, if you want to get a one-to-one -one image to me to look at close up and, and do a more in-depth thing, just let, just let Mike or I know and we'll, we'll arrange it. We'll figure it out. That's what we do on this show for everybody. So, yep. so uh, yeah, that's always out there. Yep. Thanks for submitting, Scott. Wonderful Absolutely. image. And, we, and like AD said, we'd love to see more. All right. Up next is this image from Jose. And Jose says... Uh, the pattern of horizontal, vertical, and diagonal lines of the trusses, beams, and columns caught my eye in the interior shot of this abandoned hangar in Ta Tonopah, whatever, New Nevada. <laughs> I knew that yep. I didn't want to take a, a literal shot, 
So I converted it to black and white, added a severe vignette and a border to push it more as a symmetrical, a symmetrical fine art piece um, taken uh, with an infrared camera and a fisheye lens. Cool. I like all that. Yeah, he's got, uh, I'm just checking his lines real quick. <laughs> <laughs> so it has a tendency to look like it's leaning a little bit to the left uh, to me, that the left side is down, but it's not. Um, he's done a very good job of making sure that the sides of the image are uh, symmetrical, um, but it does have a, a, a weird feel to it. Like it is. Um, you think that's out. the fisheye doing that? Well, no, I think what it is, is it's the uh, shadows and light on the ground, which is the sun wasn't directly over top. It was mm -hmm. kind of off this way a little bit to the left. And so it's making the lines on the bottom kind of. Just a little bit off. Right. They're going one way while the lines up top are going straight. So the idea here, uh, Jose, would have been to make sure that you were here right at dead on noon. And if you miss that moment, then you got to come back another day. Um, other than that, I mean, he did a wonderful job of the windows are, you know, perfect. That You couldn't cut a mirror image much uh, better than that. It's just that the light on the ground was not. Um, and a lot of times we talk about these, this sort of image. Um, it's that decisive moment, right? Mm -hmm. and, and so a lot of times patience is going to get you that very perfect symmetry. And here I think that you're kind of being foiled by the 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 light being uh, on the floor being off and that's making it feel like it's tilted when it's not he's got the line straight on the windows um because i just measured all of that <laughs> with my with my edge of my screen um and i always i just use the edge of my screen which is always straight i'll just drag the window down and look at it on the edge of the screen and i can see that the windows are are nice and level the beams are are level all of the the windows on both sides line up, the bottoms and tops line up with each other. So he's done a wonderful job there. Um, unfortunately, he got screwed over kind of by the sun. Um, so this is one of those things where got to go back, got to take it again. Um, if if it's me and I'm calling it fine art, yeah. Uh, when I start to get Just to fine art, off. man, I yeah, with fine art, you got to go over stuff. That's the whole point of fine art is fine tooth comb perfect. Uh, and then nail in the shot along with that, which is that's what makes it very hard to accomplish. Uh, black and white. Awesome. Love the contrast. I love all of the noise going on uh, to the center of the image. I think that's cool. It's just I, I really would like to see it where the shadows were in line with the symmetry because it's not symmetrical with those shadows in there. I often I would off, I would really contest that if he cut the whole bottom of the photo off, he would see that. If he cut the floor off the photo, no, you can you uh, you can see that even without it, it's the lines are just pointed a little bit different in the shadows. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Yeah. But if he cut the floor oh, out, yeah, he would see that you know that what it's doing to it. Mm -hmm. um, so um, yeah, I, I think it's a great photo though, uh, in a great attempt. It's just man, you got to notice all them little details when you when you get to uh, calling stuff fine art and you start labeling. Uh, that level. And I got to be honest with you. I'll be, um, I'm not, I don't think he's doing this, but, um, don't, don't put your stuff out there and, and stick it in a fine art category. Fine art develops itself. Okay. So you put your photos out there, stick to an internal theme that you, that you believe is fine art, but don't pigeonhole it or label it. Let, let your, People who enjoy your work and whatnot, they'll raise you up to that plinth themselves. Um, if you put, try to put yourself up there um, right off the bat, you might end up with more resistance than favor. So just be careful with that um, when you're putting stuff out there. I'm just coming from self-experience. Yeah. So just so you know. <laughs> All right. Yeah. Thanks, Jose. A wonderful image yeah. as, as always. So Jose is, is submits great photos quite often. Yeah, I'm very jealous of the location. By yes. The <laughs> <laughs> um, all right. Next image is uh, this is another new photographer to the group. I yes. Believe. Oh, wrong name. Hold on. That's not Jose. That was the last person. Mm -hmm. It is. Let me, let me give him the time again. Malcolm Fairman. There you go. And Malcolm says, I planned the night before to go 60 miles to where the church was. But yes. three, three times earlier that morning, I almost turned back as... Looking over to the French coast, could see no stars. 
and that was the direction of the sunrise. It, it meant it was cloudy over there. However, I went for it, and why was I pleased I did? First, the ground was covered in mist and sheep droppings. <laughs> but, the <laughs> mist, <laughs> but the mist. Yeah, but the mist. But the mist, that was the thing. The sun before it rose. But the sun before it rose lit up the clouds with a red flare effect, which lasted about two to three minutes. That picture alone was worth the price of admission. The actual sunset was beautiful too, but again, last minutes before the sun rolled up into the clouds, um, walking away, I turned for one last look and saw the picture. Some diffused light on the front of the church. The clouds were lovely, uh, the mist thick. That's the picture you have here. A uh, shot with a Sony at one one thousand of a second, two second delay, and time for the four birds, ti and timed it as the four birds flew over. I could not have been happier. I just knew that I had taken one of my best ever pictures. Sometimes you just feel it without even getting home and looking at it on the computer. Uh, then he said, process cool. was to add a little saturation to the cloud and increase the contrast. Color correction for the whole image. Nice. Cool. So I guess I would ask a um, lot of story there yep. for Malcolm. Um, and I got most of it um, from looking at the photo without reading uh, Malcolm's story. Um, but I guess that uh, I guess what we normally ask for Malcolm, and I'll just put this out there because we talk about this each time when we do the show. Um, your photo needs to speak for you without your words. That's where you cross into the line of, I think what Jose is going for um, and what so many photographers go for is the image is worth a thousand words. We've, we've heard this before. A picture's worth a thousand words. Um, that's what a good photo <laughs> does for us. I think this photo did that on its own without your wording. My question would be, why did you submit it to me or to the show? Um, and to know that, I need to know what you were going for with your composition uh, what you were going for with your color processing and that sort of thing. Um, because for me, the composition is not good. Um, and, uh, the color is great. Like the color. I think you could have bumped it up even a little more. Um, and really, you know, you mentioned red sun in there. Let's, you know, we could feel a little bit more of that heat. I think I, w I don't think too many people be upset. Um, but that's okay to err on the side of caution when it comes to saturation. I, I totally dig that. Um, for me though, I'll give you a, a few suggestions. Uh, I think you caught the, the great moment, great atmosphere, nice composition between the clouds and the church. The light on the front of the church is beautiful. The setting is wonderful. The birds got to go. Birds do not belong in this shot. It's a nice thought and a nice, you know, I caught them while they were right over the church sort of thing. But what do those birds do for this image Really, they draw my eye to a blank part of the image, mm -hmm. and that's not what you want. The light is what you want in this image. That's what you captured here was the sun. You talk about it more than the birds. In fact, you left the birds for the end and kind of tacked them on. That tells you right there, they're just tacked onto the photo. Get rid of them. I think you could take this and crop it down into a cinematic crop below those birds, and you would be like, oh, wow, this is just... It's a cinematic shot. It's going to look like it's straight out of a, a movie. Um, and they're not really doing anything for you up there. Uh, if they were down lower in the image, maybe, and balanced with the church, maybe over on the right-hand side a little bit. Um, but there's just that blank blue up there with birds. That's another image. That's a whole other thing going on. You got, you know, that's they're they're got their own show up there. Um, and the other suggestion I would make is make sure – that you are doing your border patrol. Because when I see this image, I think old country church, old country house, uh, farm with the sheep and the light. I think simple. I think old times. I think the old ways things used to be. And then I look over to the left and I see a power pole right on the edge of the photo and lines. And I don't want that. I don't want to be reminded that man still exists and, and, <laughs> and we're are putting up 
you know, signs and, and lines everywhere in, to ruin our photos. And that's what they do. They only put those things up. They could put all those underground. They don't. They put them in the air. They're just like, ha, you're not going to take a photo of that because I'm going to put a line there. Um, so if you look on this and you follow that line, I was looking at the fog and enjoying the bridges. And I was look, you know, zooming in on the bridges. I do have an image of this that I can zoom in a little bit on. And and when I got to the left-hand side, I see a power pole and the light glinting off the power pole and lines over there. You, you're going to have to – I would make sure that's edited out of there. You don't want those utility people interfering with your gorgeous shot that you have captured here. And aside from the birds – and they could be moved, by the way. You can move. You can just clone those things and move them anywhere you want. Um, but I don't think they're necessary. Um, and I don't know how Mike feels about this, but for me um, – I look at this image and doggone it, every time I start to enjoy the church and the light, my eyes see this blotch in the corner and I look at the birds. And yeah, I'm like, I, I go to the birds every time. And why what, am I looking at the birds? <laughs> what, I, what I was thinking, and I, the church to me is a little bit too far to the right, to our right. Um, I wouldn't mind if it was a little bit more to the left. That would crop off those, those power poles you're seeing. And then, like you said, I don't need all that blue that's taken up, good gosh, 40, maybe almost yeah. 50% of the sky. Yeah. Uh, it's not can... negative space. I got one to specify here. It's not negative space because you got birds in it. Yeah. So it's, it's active space. It's positive. It's a big negative space with some positive in it. So it's drawing our eye up there and you got to be always think simplify when you're thinking of an image like this, the, the less subject things going on, generally the, the more pleasing it's going to be. You got sun and fog a little bit of sheep in there, which are – the sheep are really non-existent almost. Um, you got to look hard to see them, and that's a nice find. Yeah. They're not distracting, right? They're in the background. They're, they are background. To me, you want to really focus on the light on the church, the front of the church, and and that light, beautiful light coming from the right. Yeah. And so, so well, I think what we're saying, Malcolm, is – you know, you got you got a good moment. You got a good picture here. Absolutely. And it, try some different crops. You don't have to destroy yep. your original. These are no all, you know, these are all non-destructive. Right. Try yep. some different crops and see if the crop we're talking about, uh, you actually come back and go, wow, this is even a better image than what I thought it was. Because um, right. I think like like Ed said, capturing those birds flying over is kind of cool, but it distracts from the image. So. Yep. Other than that, man, keep submitting photos. I love seeing new faces. Um, and let us know what I was getting to. Let us know why you pulled the trigger on this shot. Why did you press the shutter button? I mean, it's pretty obvious, but I want to hear it from you. You know, uh, the, this was all running. This was all happening this way. And I, I wanted to capture it this way. And then tell us why you composed your image the way that you did um, and why you uh, process it the way you did. Those three things, and I can give you a solid critique based upon your goal from the image. And it might be as simple as, dude, you nailed it. You're done. Yep. You, you nailed it. Or it might be you nailed it. And here's a few suggestions I would try. Or it might, you know, it might be a full on, let's start over. Who knows? But um, sometimes with, you got to do that. Yep. Yeah. Without that information, though, I'm just, you're just hearing me talk. So, Malcolm, I mean, that's, that's essentially what it is. It's just what I would do uh, uh, as a photographer. So take that with a grain of salt. So all speaking saying. of that, as we head into the next image, you're hey. just going to hear us talk. <laughs> because, uh, because unlike, <laughs> because unlike <laughs> what Malcolm did, who gave us a, a nice write up, um, uh, and like AD said, a little bit more information about why. Uh, but Mike, Malcolm gave us a good write-up. Debbie, you didn't give us anything. Uh, nothing here. So I imagine this is a photo of your cat. Uh, and I think that Debbie has, uh, you know, a decent lens because it looks like it's, yeah. she's got really good bokeh there, really smooth oh, yeah. bokeh uh, with that. And, you know, I often uh, one of the tips I give to beginners is to always get down to the level of, of your subject that's mm -hmm. not that's a soft rule i think like all rules in photography or in maybe in life uh is a, a soft rule oh yeah so, absolutely uh this image just because it's not head on with uh the cat's face i think it's, it still works um not everything has to be head on with the face sure. so yeah that, yeah I, th I think that want you know um debbie if i was a if i was a strict teacher which i've been told that i I've been called the – in fact, a, a student sent me this little bobblehead because 
of the sledgehammer. <laughs> uh, and they, they told me that I was the velvet sledgehammer, which don't Google that, whatever you do. Um, but uh, I would probably say, Mike, let's go to the next photo because the, the person didn't provide anything for me mm -hmm. other than the photo. And I, you got to put the effort in if you want to get the results out. That's now with that said, um, I think Debbie also knows that, you know, she's, She's not a, I don't think she's a beginner nope. photographer at all. Um, and so, you know, we, we get to feature her, uh, her fine work on the show. Um, so I don't know what Debbie's looking for here. Uh, the only suggestion that I had when I looked at this image was I'm not a big fan of people facing away from the uh, camera. So you notice how the cat is facing the composed side of the image so the face of the cat is in the left thirds mm -hmm. but the body is in the the right thirds i think if i was going to have the cat facing the left i would want the cat's face in the right thirds Does that makes sense mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. um or in the center um it's kind of an odd odd thing um or it needs to be a little bit more balanced with the cat's body a little bit more to the right with the cat's head right where it's at. So if Debbie moved a little bit to the right, she could have got more of a side shot, I think, a little bit, which, you know, with the trees and everything around might might have been more difficult than we're because we weren't there. Right. But we don't have any information to go by. So uh, I'm just winging it here. Um, but it seems as like the image is a little unbalanced to me where um, there's more space around the body of the cat on the right-hand mm, side yeah, than there, there is, is on the left-hand side. So it feels a little like... Like I would think that the body part would um, is going to be symmetrical with the actual subject, which is the cat's face, if we're breaking it down here, in in the left hand side. So I just would like to see the cat like turned a little bit um, in the image, if that makes any sense to you. Other than that, I mean the color's great. The focus, as far as I can tell, is right on right the on, eyes. Yeah. Perfect, right? I mean, and Debbie always submits good images. So it's not like uh, we have a lot to talk about here other than showing, again, showing a great image from her. So that's just little stuff, Debbie is all. So Okay. Uh, now we're going to move into the last image. This last image right. we're going to review for the December images. And this one is from Amber. Yes. And Amber, Amber doesn't give us a lot here either. Nope. But <laughs> she, she does say, took this one of my boy with my Olympus and the fish and a fisheye lens. And yeah. obviously black and white. Yes. So we've talked to Amber about like, uh, she likes to have fun and try different things, mm -hmm. which includes uh, color process. It includes props. It includes comp uh, composites where she puts different things together. Um, and here she's, ex she's exploring lenses and what they do to folks and we can see that a fisheye lens which usually isn't used for portraiture simply because it will either make you look like you have a fat head or a fat body or both it distorts or, you yes yeah the distortion is almost too much for images but in a case like this where she's got like a uh a comical look uh on his face kind of giving you a mm -hmm kind of look mm -hmm. is what i get out of this she used the fisheye lens just right to reduce the size of his body, make his head swelled, which is what the look he's giving you is that look, right? Yeah. That's, he's like, mm-hmm, like leaning into the camera. He, she, I think she executed this quite well with using the fisheye lens. So uh, again, Amber showing that experimenting and playing around with this stuff is exactly how you learn. Making the mistakes is how you learn. And she brought us many images that were great, but they had little things that she learned about them and she keeps applying and applying and applying and keeps coming back with better and better images every time. She's just like Millen in that effect that, you know, she, she started out one way and she's ending up here with, uh, yeah, she's, with, with she, excellent fun stuff. So she's def it's, it's definitely, she's progressed along the way. And, and I like yeah. the, the way his, you know, she, like you mentioned, Minimize his body, have him yep. turn his his face like that, and then yep. the distortion that's happened to his face is is I, I like that effect that's happening yeah. there. And black and white here, I think, is perfect. Yeah, a couple things, um, Amber, just to watch for, and I know you love this kind of information, so I'm going to give it to you. Again, with the balance of the image from the left and the right, there's a little bit too much room on the left hand, his left hand shoulder, or on the right hand side of the image. Um, 
try to bring that in a little bit so it matches the other side because this is a very symmetrical image with his eye in the center. So if you could just move that over just a little bit, you'd be fine. And then his glasses where you did the composite on his glasses next to his left eye or on the right side of the image, um, you can see that through the glasses is a little lighter than the background is. And you have to be careful when you do that sort of uh, cut out around the image to put in your background. Make sure that those are matched. The 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 there isn't any difference there because we wouldn't look through his glasses and the background would be lighter. If anything, glasses would make the background a little darker um, because glasses, you know, bend tent. and distort light a little bit and yeah. could have a little bit of a tint to them. And they could have a tint to them as well. Yeah, and but I'm pretty sure they don't lighten things up. At least I haven't found any glasses that make anything, <laughs> anything brighter other than my LED glasses, which I refuse to wear on camera. So, <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, so just be careful with those comp, uh, composite things uh, in there, Amber. But I know you'll you'll focus on that sort of stuff and and nail it. So. All right, that was the last image from uh, from December. Next, next show will head into <laughs> January. But uh, if you want to subscribe to the show, we're obviously on YouTube. You can you know follow us there, or, you know, uh, subscribe, whatever, on YouTube, and ring that do that little bell so you get the notice when we go live. But we're also on iTunes, video large and video small. We're on uh, Vimeo, and then have an RSS feed. You can get it from there. Uh, so if that's if you want to get the show recorded later on. Also, head over to AD's website, explorographer.com, where you can you know, read about AD's latest adventures uh, and, and, and his beautiful photos. And also, he has all his different ways to connect with him, including uh, Who is AD? Go over to the Who is AD link. And right down there is a form where you can fill out and if you want to email him and contact him that way. Yes, please read that and then tell me who I am, please. <laughs> Help me. Help, help me. Help tell AD who he is. Yes. Right. Uh, and then, of course, uh, check out his store where you have, what do you have over here, AD? Let's see. Photo Tool Store. Go over to Photo Tool Store. And you have Lightroom presets. You have stuff for Aurora. And you have stuff for Luminar and Photoshop. Yes. And we have some new things coming. It's just production is very slow on my end because I'm lazy and I don't get things done <laughs> when I'm supposed to. So I know um, the feeling. And I get yelled at for that all the time. So, <laughs> But I do have some new things. Um, hopefully, uh, before the summer hits, um, there's been a lot of uh, slowdown in my world lately as far as uh, my production goes because I'm crammed in this little office and things aren't ideal here. So I've been... Using that as my overall excuse for not getting things done, but um, I promise you, I do have some. Uh, we have some new Lightroom presets coming out. Uh, I'm working on some things for Luminar and some other programs too, outside of those like Topaz and a few others. So, you know, I don't know about you, Ad, but I if if I don't feel right, I don't get into the mood. So one of the things for me, if things are disorganized. Uh, or if one of my computers is not acting right, it, and it's different for everybody. But those little things throw me off, and I have trouble getting motivated to do other things. And so yeah. everybody's a little different uh, on on what those things are that throw you off. So I can definitely, uh, you know, feel you when you say that, that your you know your space isn't right for you, um, and that's that is distracting and can throw you off. But you know, hey. You know, sooner or later, you know, it's not like um, it's the, our last day here, hopefully. <laughs> right. <laughs> well, and it's it's one of those things, too. As a creator, I can tell you firsthand, uh, for me, I really have to be in a certain mood mm -hmm. in order to do my best work. Um, and I know that sounds cliche, but uh, I can't go out and, and just uh, create things without being in the right frame of mind to do a good job on them. So... Um, it's just uh, that's one of those things where um, it, they come as they come. And I used to be that way with songwriting, too. I couldn't write a song unless I was in the right mood. My band would hate me for it. But I'm like, you know what? I'm not going to write a piece of junk. And after a while, I would just get to the point where I would create things, um, whether they were bad or indifferent, because I always felt that you had to get the garbage out in order to get the good stuff out, too. So it's kind of a process with me. I'll go a while, and then I'll be like sick of myself and – and won't be able to do something, and 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 then I'll be like, to hell with it, I'm going to do it, and I do it, and get through the the mess. So it's my own personal hurdles that I deal with. So. I'm not nearly as creative as you, so I don't know if this is the case with everybody, but it feels to me, for for me, 
I have to be in the right mood to be creative. I can't force it. Yep. That's um, exactly right. Yeah. Yep. Uh, it, I mean, it's not going to be good either way when I do it, but if I do force it, it's really going to be bad. <laughs> oh yeah, absolutely. For sure. All right. And then, and then your other place, um, what is happening here? The creators. The creators.com over on Patreon. We can go over there and you can come become a patron of ADs. And we've talked about this before. Yeah. Even for just $1 a month, uh, on up to depending on what you want to do with AD, but as for a little as $1 a month, you become a patron and you're, you have access to all the videos when you do them, all the training videos that you do them, and uh, your posts there. But you can go all the way up to, what is it, $75 is the, the, the ultimate? And for that, yep. Yep. For, tell us a little bit about the $75 tier. Well, if you, if you want mentorship, so if you want to have access to me, call me up like a, you would your best friend and say, Hey man, I'm working on this project. Help me out. Uh, I'm, I want to make my photography a business. Uh, I need a website. I need to know how to, to do, to make a website, anything that has to do with your creativity. Essentially, uh, I am at your beck and call, uh, each month for the $75. So essentially, uh, and you can't call me every day, but I'm very, uh, anybody who's on that, like right now, Janice is one of my $75, uh, contributors and Janice Sullivan. And we produce a show for her two times a month. I will produce a show. So she gets a podcast. All she has to do is Skype call me and we produce a show and she has guests on the show and I arrange all this stuff for her. And then I broadcast it for her on her YouTube channel. So um, that's the kind of stuff that I do at the $75 uh, level. Now, before you ever go to that, don't just go to Patreon. If you wanted to do that, don't just go there and be like, oh yeah, sign me up. Let's go. <laughs> you want to contact me and talk to me about it first, because there's obviously limitations to what I can pull off. Um, can I change you from an accountant to a full-time photographer? I probably nope. can't do that. Um, you have to do that. What I do is um, I am there to help you get over the hurdles. That's what a mentor does. Uh, but you have to have the motivation. Janice has great motivation. She does a lot of work herself, but when she hits a hurdle, she calls me up and I'm like, let's work through this. Let's get around it. Sometimes I hold her hand and I do it for her and she watches me do it and tries it herself and we work through it that way. Sometimes I just, I make her a video and, and she watches the video and boom, she's off running. But she has that motivation. That's what she wants to do. Um, I don't do that for people. I don't be, I'm not like a Tony Robbins and I'm like, I'm going to, you know, today we're going to do this and we're going to climb this mountain. We're going to, I don't do that. You got to want to climb that mountain yourself. I'm just a guy who says, this is how you put the crampons on. This is how you use the ice pick. That's, that's basically what I'm doing. But as far as going up that mountain, that's, you got to have the drive to do that. Mm -hmm. So, um, and, and that's what I do. And you know, uh, you know, I produce this show here. Uh, if you're not into that, like, I don't know, maybe yep. Janice is not into that. Right. This is this can be depending on what you're doing. This could be fairly complicated, and right. being able to push that off to somebody else that could do it for you, where all yep. you need to worry about is the content, and the, you know getting the guest, and then just talking. That really takes a massive load off of somebody, versus having to learn the software, set it right. all up. You know, like in my case, it takes more than one computer and all that kind of stuff, and then yep. getting everything set up. Sometimes I make this look easy. Sometimes I make it look really hard. <laughs> um, <laughs> It, you know. I can say, Mike, I can say for what you are doing on your end, you are taking something very difficult and making it look very easy compared to what I do, which is a completely different thing uh, the way I produce my show. Mm -hmm. um, but I tried to do it your way and tried to and I'm like, no, I'm never going to understand all of <laughs> this or be able to do this as smoothly as Mike does it. So um, I ended up seeking an alternative. But that was the whole reason why Janice yeah. contacted me about doing it is because she just wanted to enjoy the show and Absolutely. talk to her people and do her thing. She didn't want to be like, OK, now I've got to run a stinger right here into another video. Where is that at? Yep. How do you I know, even set that, that was, up? That yeah. was how the flow of her show. Now she just says, it's critique time. Boom, the thing plays, and then she's doing her critique, you know? And so, yeah. But the the $75 thing is very rare when people mm -hmm. go to that level. Um, really, what I want to do is get a 1,000 a people doing the $1 thing and giving me ideas to make videos. That's that's really what, uh, that's what I want to do. Right now, 
the the community is a little bit stagnant. We're not really people aren't giving me suggestions for videos. Um, I do have a series coming up on uh, collaborating with Premiere, which is uh, a, a lot of people want to start mm. producing videos on their own. Um, and to do that, you need to use Premiere or HitFilm Pro or Sony Vegas or some sort of processing software to make your videos. Um, and Premiere is one of the most popular. And I'm going to show people how they can share projects with a simple couple of a simple clicks. They can send a project off to a friend and they can edit it and send it back. And you can swap these files back and forth um, quite easily and collaborate on projects. But I, well, a lot of people ask me like, could you produce this video for me? Um, I've got it almost done, but I don't know what to do. And I can show them how to make a project manager file with Premiere, send it across the internet, and then I can edit it and give them uh, a file back that is it, that is fully edited and ready to go. So mm -hmm. that's one of the new things that I want to cover. We've had a couple of people, including Janice, ask me about that, how to do that. So I'm going to be doing a live stream on that coming up here uh, next cool. Monday. So Very cool. All right, thanks, Ad. Um, yeah. So that is this week's uh, this week's show. We'll be back. We'll talk about it maybe in the post show when we'll come back and start the January. I think we can do January in one show, uh, and and maybe uh, February two. So we'll we'll catch back up really quick here. So cool. until next show, keep shooting. Good night, everybody. Good night.